This week on Pole House Blood Pot Weekend Getaways, we take a slice out of a cherry pie. We also show you, as promised, how we care for our cast iron. Yeah, we're out on our front porch. There's still snow on the ground. But it's not a bad day, so we figured we better get out here and yeah. shoot some. We're both off and we wanted something sweet to eat, didn't we? Yeah, it's still kind of a comfort food, but yeah, it, it could be any time, but pie, of course. You're very partial to pie, aren't you? Yeah, I like pie a lot better. Cake's good, but if I have my choice, it's going to be pie. What's your favorite pie? Well, probably my favorite fruit pie is what we made last year. Is that That was pie. your Rocky Mountain apple pie. Yes. But, uh, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. We're yep. using frozen cherries. Yep, that pie we got cherries. When we went to the Dutch bakery, we'll link that down at the bottom yeah. of the screen. Um, but we're going to make pie out of it, aren't we? That's right. We'll make some. From scratch. Pie. Except for Except the crust. Because <laughs> yeah. I can't make crust worth a lot better comes out tasting and looking like shoe leather, doesn't it? So, good pie crust is only as good as you the can make it. The only one I know of that can make good pie crust is his mama, and he don't do it. She don't do it very often anymore. Not anymore, but we'll, we'll get by with a, one of those kinds you can buy in the dairy section yeah. and you unroll, so it won't make it go that way. So, I guess we're going to get started on that in a few minutes. We got First of all, we'll have to make a filling. Though. Yep, and I'm going to do that. So we'll be right back with that. Angel's going to do that. We'll be right back and get started on homemade cherry pie. Now for this pie filling we're going to make, we're going to have, oh it's about a pound of cherries. About a half. A pound and a half. Yeah, something like that. Now we want all the juices from our cherries. So put that in there. Ooh, that's hot. They were frozen, but we had them thaw for a little while. Yeah. Before we brought them in here. Ooh, making a mess. Mm, all right. Already pretty. To that, we're adding two thirds cup sugar. We want them tart, but not too tart. A pinch of salt. Just to cut down on some of the sweetness. And a teaspoon of cinnamon. Different flavor. Alright, now I'm going to stir all this in. Okay, now that's all pretty well incorporated in there. To that, I'm going to add a slurry of cornstarch, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and a quarter of a cup of water. You could use canned pie filling. What would you say? Two? I think two cans. I'm not for sure, but I believe that's what you normally would add. It probably says right on the pie filling. Yeah, it probably if you does. Buy it in the store. But at any rate, we like making it from scratch. So a lot of times you can find frozen fruit in the frozen section, of course. That's right. And you can make your own. It's not hard. It's a little. <clears throat> and you can make it ahead of time too. Yeah, we're gonna make this and let it cool for a little bit, at least at room temperature before we make the pie, aren't we? That way we don't cook the pie crust from the inside out, from the outside in. It looks nice and thick and yeah, yummy. Yeah, just come and to a boil. boy, then. I wish they'd hurry up and come up with Smell-O-Vision because you guys are missing out on 90% of the joy of cooking. 
Okay, so now what? We put it in this container over here and let it cool? Yeah, I'm going to let you do that, though, because I'm afraid I'll burn myself. <laughs> but it's ready. Put it in this container. Well, we got perfect snooper vision out here. Yeah, or no doggy. Yep. I'm going to have to have a hand. Hand here, maybe to clean this okay, up. Okay, well, I think I can do both. Or are you getting it? I think I'm getting it. I want to get all the goodie out of there I can. Yes, this is not like other TV shows, is it? Where you leave half your goodie in there. Here, I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. Here. Okay. I don't want to slip here. Okay. There we go. That'd be a disaster. Yeah, it would be. Looking get good. all our goodie out. See how thick that is? Yep. And it'll thicken up some more as you bake yeah. it, too. There you go, hon. Thank you. Well... You get the next part, you know. That's right. We'll let this cool for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna start getting the pie crust. And you're gonna go. do something fun with it, aren't you? I'm gonna attempt to do a latticework pie topping crust. Okay, we thought since we just got through cooking all this, I don't know cherry if you can pie see in, in there. there. It's a little dirty. So yes, it is. And we gonna, promised you we yeah. were gonna show you how we care for our cast iron. So, if you're out and about, you can put it back on your charcoal, or if you're having a fire going, you can put it out on the hang of the, the fire. And then we just basically we're gonna take some water. We cheated, we went inside and got some hot tap water. So we'll speed the process up. Good amount of hot water. And, and show them our technical device there. Technical device is just basically a plain old there's like Dollar General or Dollar, dollar Tree, Tree or something it for costs a dollar. A dollar. Plastic scrubby. Works really good, and just basically just start carefully working. You this. never use soap in a well-seasoned yeah. Dutch oven. Get this lid edge here because we had some. We poured it out. Of course, we had pie filling all the way up on that side. Well, your wife did cook it, you know. As long as you didn't stick it in there. So you that's one of the things that you wanted to really be careful. As that filling started to come up to a boil, you wanted to keep barely carefully stirring it on the bottom because that sweet filling will stick really quick if you're not careful. So, and if you didn't notice, uh, look in here, I'll pick it up angle so you can see. We had a full bed of coals underneath, so we can have a pretty good hot. So that's why you had to kind of be careful to stir it a lot. That's pretty much about as hot on the bottom as you can get it. Doesn't and take see, too long here. Swirling it around. Yep, keep scrubbing it around, especially them sides where it kind of, well, the top edge of your filling is kind of where it sometimes will stick the worst. But I think. And you know, if you got food all the way up to toward the top, it's best to scrape as much of that out as you can. Yeah, you get a plastic scrubby or a uh, thing and clean some of that out best you can. It's less work to do now, later. Okay, I think it's pretty much got it. And so, this isn't just for your outside cast iron either. You can do this on the inside too with your skillets and oh all yeah. that. Okay, now I'm going to go out. So we're outside. I'll go around to the ditch and dump this and we'll be right back and I'll show you how to finish it up. Okay. Now we're going to gonna look that. in here. It's a little bit wet. Yeah, it is. Set my gloves off here. Get a paper towel. And dry it. I'm gonna put it back on the charcoal. Make sure it gets good and warm, and that'll help sure make sure that it is good and dry. The edges. And while you're at it, if you got any charcoal dust stuff left on the outside, you can clean it up. And once it's good and dry, what I like to do is we get another small piece of a paper towel. And just kind of fold it up. Just like that, nothing fancy. And regular plain old vegetable oil. Corn oil, vegetable oil, canola, any of them work. Big blob on your pepper towel. And just go in. And if it's not shiny, there's a little bit more in there. You want to, you don't want to overdo it because then you just get a big blobby mess. And then you get something that don't taste very good. Yeah. I did it. Ruined one of Leslie's favorite dishes one time, didn't I? Yeah, because your oil can get too much in there and it, get, it can get rancid. It's you old. You just oil it up. 
And then when you get done, you can kind of wipe the outside off of it too. Keep it nice and covered with a light coating of oil. That's going to be a good way for number one non-stick and two to keep it from rusting as it sits and especially outside when they're sitting. And let's see, I have one hell that's not so oily and kind of wiping the excess out. And it can just sit there for a little bit. It's not going to get too hot now in them coals and let her sit there and finish cooling down and that'll kind of help with that warm Dutch oven them that oil will kind of soak into it. So next time we'll be ready as a good non-stick coating for the next time we're going to use this Dutch oven. So we'll be back shortly and finish making up this pie. Okay, now the pie filling is cooling. So now it's my job. First of all, I'm going to get one pie crust. Go ahead and bring it out. Let these set out about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes. Before they unroll it, hopefully we don't get any bad spots because then if you crack it, then you're going to get seepage down and it'll stick into your pie shell. So, and, and we'll kind of make sure that the seams or them corners are kind of down, down in there. Just like that. All right. Now. And we're going to get out the top. The contrary. There we go. Unroll it. Now I'm going to attempt to cut this into strips. I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch wide, I think. And we'll see what that does. Pizza cutter works good for this job. That was the easy part. Now, next part. We're going to take our pie filling and add it to the bottom crust. Look at that, nice and thick. Still just a tiny bit warm, but not very much. Probably been resting about 45 minutes, sitting out at room temperature. Get all this out of here if we can. Oh, it still smells good. smell of vision baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to kind of spread it out evenly at the bottom of the pie shell. Now comes the tricky part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take every other one and start laying it out and try to put about the same amount of gap as we had as we take it off. I'm going to have to move over a little bit more here to get started. Like I say, I've only done this one time. Okay, now, we take every other one and fold it over. We take, oops, this one. Get all this done and then go from there. <clears throat> now that I got them all put in there this way, I got to go around and kind of take the seams and kind of fold them up, pinch them over. Probably not going to be perfect, but it'll work. Turn it as I go. If you leave them out too much, I'm afraid they're going to get too brown. Party. Not too bad for a beginner. Okay. Next step, we're gonna come over here. Got the pie all made. We're gonna set it down in. I got. If you look here, bring it here, Angel. Got a wire rack. Okay. Uh -huh. That'll get the bottom of the pie plate up off of bottom of the Dutch oven. Set it down in here, and then I have 
one egg white that we kind of whisked up that we're gonna lightly coat the entire top of our crust very carefully so we don't mess up your lattice work. Right. Isn't that a pretty pie, folks? I think I missed a couple of spots over here. This ought to give it a nice glossy, shiny finish, we hope. A couple other little, th one last thing. Put just a little bit of raw sugar on top. Nice little sprinkling. Now, in case you're wondering why we lined the Dutch oven with foil and then also added in a pie plate, that is because if you've ever made fruit pie, sometimes it cooks and it kind of bubbles over, makes a sticky mess. This way, we'll have a sticky mess inside the foil night in the bottom of the Dutch oven. So, we'll be right back. Charcoal is almost ready. I'm going to get the lid on the Dutch oven and then we'll get this pie bacon. Well, are them briquettes ready? <laughs> I think the briquettes are ready, yes. Joy says they are. Don't know if you can see it, but there's a cat down there that's antagonizing him. Dump charcoal out on top. I have to make a mess. Joy, enough. That's enough, buddy. Okay, now we're baking. So we're going to put our normal, we got about 30 pieces of charcoal, so we're going to put 10 on the bottom, around the outside edge. Now I got my tin on the bottom. I'm going to do a normal, nice full ring around the outside. And then we'll put some in the middle. Let's see if we get a few nice good ones right in the center here. Now I got them arranged so we'll have a pretty even heat on top. Okay, this is going to take, a good pie takes at least 45 55 minutes to get it good and done. So, the charcoal is going to start dying probably in about 40 45 minutes. So, especially with the wind. Yeah, I'm going to put the wind guard on here in a second, kind of protect it. Uh, so, about 30 minutes, we'll start some more charcoal and probably put about half this amount on there again, top and bottom. So, about 15 16 coals. So, we're going to get the lids, I mean, the, excuse me, get the wind guard on and come back in about 15 minutes since we've got a pretty long cook time and give it a rotate. So we'll get it going and we'll come back and see you then. Well. First rotate. Yep. Like anything with our Dutch oven cooking and baking, we rotate bottom one way. And the lid, third of a turn, in the opposite direction. Be back in 15 minutes. I think it's about time to check it. Let's do it. Yep. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get 
this out gently and then after it cools yep. we're gonna try it but we're gonna show you a picture of it after we're done after we when we cut it so yep. that about does it for this weekend getaway although we didn't get to get away but I uh, hope you like this video if you did please give us a thumbs up a like uh, share us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and Thank you for watching. Yep, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.